Let's make a Blythe-sized dollhouse hutch. A wonderful doll customizer friend of mine started making these doll hutch kits. And as soon as I saw them, I knew I needed to get one. You know my love of dollhouses and you know my love of Blythe, so it was only a matter of time before I started making Blythe dollhouse stuff. So I started by separating the pieces by whether it was a top hutch piece or a bottom hutch piece. Then I read through the directions and grabbed my bottle of wood glue. All of the pieces arrived with this masking tape outer to protect the wood. And all of the pieces were labeled so nicely that it made it pretty easy to keep everything organized. First we'll start with the bottom half of the hutch. I used the wood glue to attach the right side of the hutch to the back and use my trusty Lego gluing jig to make sure that it's flush and squared. Then grab the top support piece and glue it to the inside edge of those pieces. I decided I wanted the back of the hutch to have like this wallpaper print on it. I picked out the scrapbook paper from Michaels because I thought it looked romantic and vintagey. So I measured and cut out a piece to fit the back. I opened up my container of Yes Glue, which is how I would normally put the wallpaper on, but found that it was completely dry. So I glued it with wood glue, which was a bad idea. Don't try this at home. Next to glue on was this pretty decorative piece. Next I glued on the bottom of the hutch, making sure it was flush with the bottom edge of the back. Then I glued on the shelf. However, I used some of the other pieces in the kit as spacers. This helps to ensure that my shelves will be parallel. Then it's time to glue on the other side. Make sure it's flush and squared. Then it's time for the decorative top piece. She recommended that you round the front three edges, so that's what I did. I feel like my Dremel gets more camera time than I do. Maybe we need to come up with a name for it. If you have any suggestions, let me know. After I do the hard work with the Dremel, I go in with a finer sandpaper to make it smooth. Then really lather on the wood glue. And then place the piece on top with a little bit of overhang on the front three sides. I start by cutting out the scrap paper and attaching it to the backboard. Then glued one of the side edges of the back piece. Then attached it to the side piece. Then did the same with the top. Then I began gluing in the shelves. I used another piece of the kit as a spacer to ensure that my shelves were parallel and evenly spaced. And attached the support strip where the bottom shelf would be. Then it was time to glue on the other side piece. The creator of the kit recommended rounding out the top piece too, so I used Sandy to do just that. Then glued it to the top of the hutch. Then it was time to attach the top of the hutch to the bottom of the hutch. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Well you know me, I can't do anything normally, so let's see what I do to this. We downloaded and 3D printed a few decorative applique pieces from Thingiverse and sanded the backs of them to make sure they were flat for application. Then I began to measure where I was going to place the appliques. A great trick if you want to figure out the center line of something is to draw diagonal lines from each corner. Then where those lines cross in the center is your center line. Then I decided I kind of wanted a wainscoting side. So I grabbed some popsicle sticks and cut them at a 45 degree angle to make a box. Then I grabbed my least favorite glue in the world, crazy glue. Sure, it sticks to everything, but I also make a huge mess with it every time I use it. So I opted to use rubber gloves and used it to attach the plastic onlay pieces to the wood. But I used wood glue for the popsicle sticks. I have to give this stuff time to dry, so I've got to put it down for the night. I started by sanding the dark or burned edges so they would accept paint. Then I used a white Arteza paint marker as a base coat on those edges. Then slightly watered down some acrylic white paint so it would apply smoother. Then began painting. 
This was a long and tedious process, as it took many, many coats to get it to cover completely. Because they were so detailed and hard to get to, the interior shelves were the most difficult. Normally, I would paint it before putting it together, but the directions told me not to. Well, now it looks brand new and clean, but I want to make it look old and used. To give the hutch a lacquer finish, I coated it with satin varnish. After that dried, I took a medium grit sandpaper and began roughing up the edges especially in high traffic areas or places where it would get bumped or deemed a lot. This really helps to give the hutch character and like it's been lived with and loved. Old pieces of furniture tend to have dirt in places where you can't clean very well. So I watered down some brown paint and began applying it. The trick is to make sure your paint is very watered down and then blot it up gently afterwards. This will leave a light dirt-like residue. Make sure to really think about where dirt might get that won't be able to be cleaned up. Well, it certainly has character now. It actually looks fairly old, but still beautiful. First, we 3D printed some light fixtures. Then I sprayed it with Mr. Super Clear and white paint. Then finish it with a glossy Mr. Super Clear. Then I painted the insides with the mirror paint from Culture Hustle. This will help reflect the light so I get more brightness out of my lights. Then I inserted some light diffusing plastic. Then it came time to install the LEDs. Look at how tiny they are. So I measured out and drilled holes into the back. Then fed the light through and glued it in place. Then glued our light fixtures on top of them. I think it turned out pretty nice. There are a few things that I would do differently, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. If you like this, please hit subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And as always, have a delightful day.